Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to finish up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's comes at us from an anonymous, don anonymous donor, uh, the Echo Replacement by Demilich, one of the most unique sounds in old school death metal which has spawned tons of derivative worship bands. Alright, I don't think I've heard of this band before. Which is interesting because uh, y'all throw a lot of names at me. I've seen <laughs> most of the stuff, even if it's my first time hearing them, I've at least heard of. And Demilich is not ringing a bell at all for me. Uh, this did come out in 94 though, so definitely old school death metal uh, era. Let's uh, dive into this and see what they're bringing to the table today. There we go. Ugh. Ooh, the phrasing is interesting. We've had a few twelves and then we had a fifteen. Uh, beat phrases. Oh. Yeah, the tempo shifts are all over the place as well. like our left guitar having that riff while our right guitar just chords. Nice vocal division there as well. bit of harmony there. Oh, actually our left guitar is not playing one note. And it makes it feel delayed. That's...
that was oh okay <laughs> let's uh All right, first things first. Uh, vocals, what in the world? Uh, I'm going to assume there's a little bit of production stuff on there. And every 90% of the vocals you hear out there are produced in some capacity. Uh, I'm not saying that everything in rock and metal is done like pop music where there's so much done to alter it. But very few vocal performances are completely untouched. So I'm not saying this to, uh, disc not that using production is a bad thing on vocals anyways, but I'm not saying this to discredit the vocalist at all uh, of their skills, but I do think there is a little bit of extra boom and width given to the vocals, but there is some wild stuff being produced here uh it's it's just i mean some of it i think is also like microphone technique it sounds like he is right on the microphone and just uh just i don't know maybe even the microphone is in his mouth at some time to just give it that real hollow open sound um and then he's got the the uh, he's got the fry crackle in there and it is just a monstrous sound. Um, I did not enjoy it, but I am very impressed by the craft behind it. <laughs> uh, it is just, geez, that is that is the elephant in the room. I think everything else here, you know, we can we can hear a lot of uh, similarities between it and other rock and metal the, the the sonic qualities of it a lot of the uh dynamic shifts uh, a lot of it being metric based uh rhythmic based which is popular in in uh metal music but the vocals are not like anything i've heard before it is it is just bonkers now aside from the vocals though a lot of this is experimental I think might be the best word for it it's definitely moving into a prog metal realm um, our selector called this old school death metal and I think I was expecting something a bit more static uh, achieving death's sound and atmosphere and sitting within that this feels like it took the death metal sound and was beginning to push it which maybe that's what was happening at this era i don't know when death started you know when the band death came out and and you know kicked off the death metal uh, genre i don't know what year that was i think it was around here late 80s early 90s possibly but this feels prog death to me in a lot of ways because it does a lot of the things that we that i think of when i think of uh uh prog metal when i think of bands like haken and between the buried and me it's a lot of metric uh experimentation you know prog rock experimented with sounds we introduced new instruments technology was flourishing at the time panning was a huge thing back then um, you know, bringing in strings and, and brass into your rocks uh, setup. It was all about experimenting with sound. But when we get to prog metal, to me, that's that's when we really get into the technical aspect of music, which uh, kind of in opposition of experimenting with sound, we experiment with rhythms, which is where we get stuff like uh, gent and all of the insanity of I mean, I, I don't think this is technically prog metal, but Car Bomb, uh, we get all of the uh, the rhythmic intensity and that stuff. Um, and that's what I hear here. It is musically rather simple as far as the core riffs 
and the sonic quality of the song, which doesn't really shift at all throughout here. The guitars don't take on new tones. We don't get uh, different atmospheres. Everything's sort of at the same intensity and emotion and vibe from beginning to end. But there is a lot of chaos in uh, time signature and tempo. And it creates several sections that I do not understand as best as I tried to figure out what we were doing. Uh, I mean, even just, we start off the song in 4-4, four, four, but in three-bar phrases. It's, it's just, it's just a hair away from what we're used to. It removes the symmetry of the four-bar phrase, makes it feel disjointed, and we end up with 12 beats per phrase, which is symmetrical. It's divisible right down the middle. Normally, we would do four bars of three to achieve that, but our phrasing is not emphasizing groupings of three. It's emphasizing groupings of four. Uh, it's just a, an anomalous section. Uh, it, do, it can't be felt in three, but it makes more sense to hear it in, th or to read it in three. But it doesn't make more sense to hear it in three. Um, and so it makes something that, at least to me, is extremely abrasive while still being wholly cohesive. Now, what's interesting is that we do push away from this 12 sometimes. I could not figure out the larger pattern, but there were some 15s in there. And instead of a 12-beat phrase, we get a 15, so that's four bar, or three bars of four and a bar of three, which, again, just does so much to disorient uh, the listener and removes them from that expectation of having that something that there's an expectation for in the 12 we're expecting another bar in the 15 we're expecting another beat and they just don't come around we jump to the next idea sooner than is expected uh, and of course all of this changes the more you listen to it eventually you get a feel for what the track is doing groove wise and rhythmically and you begin the the abrasive parts begin to get rounded off a little bit as you can expect what they're doing you know you have the memory of, of having heard it before but on a first time listen there's so many sections in here that either last longer than expected or get cut off faster than expected and it creates several moments that feel disorienting i can never quite get my footing i'm either taking a step and there's an extra stair i wasn't expecting or i'm taking a step and there is a step down that i wasn't expecting and now i'm tumbling so uh or even worse i'm expecting a step and there isn't one you get that that funny little stumble when you thought there was going to be ground higher than there was uh or if you're descending stairs and the ground is earlier than you expect. Um, yeah, all, all those feelings, though, were in here because of their frequent shifting of time signature. But that's not the only thing they played around with either. Tempo was frequently shifting. And because of some of the qualities of the track sonically, it's very compressed. Uh, there's a lot of sounds that sort of overlap. I don't always get a clear indication of the second beat. So sometimes when we change tempos, I feel like we've gotten slower or faster, but I haven't heard that second hit to really solidify it yet. And it isn't until beat three or four, and I'm like, oh, you know, we've sped up or we've slowed down uh, because there's just so much clutter going on. Um, and interestingly also... Not everything is emphasizing every beat. Not everything is being played perfectly in time. This is one thing I, I talked about there. Um, we had that, uh, it was something, it was like a series of notes with a quick pickup into it. So like bum, ba bum, 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 something along those lines. Um, and what's really interesting is when we harmonize it and our left guitar ends up playing a higher pitch than our our right guitar, it doesn't play that pickup note. But the pickup note was on the downbeat. So what it sounds like is that our... I, I know I didn't sing it that way. I sung it as a, a note that goes into the downbeat. But it starts on the downbeat. Um, but what's really interesting then is that our higher pitch guitar sounds like it is constantly behind the beat. It's coming in late and it feels like it's dragging the song. Um... But as far as I could tell, it was intentional. 
the lower note or the lower guitar played that first note, the higher pitch just didn't. It didn't do anything on the downbeat. It came in just after it, and it sounded so strange. Um. So yeah, there's there's like several moments where the downbeat itself is emphasized musically somewhere, but it's not the dominant sound at the moment. So that just clutters up the vibe and not the vibe, the time feel of the whole section. And that happens frequently. That's that's the only one I can really remember at the moment. But uh, oh, and the covering up of uh, of downbeat uh, accents as well. That I just talked about. It's it's just a song that is consistently. <laughs> it's like walk. It's like walking a balance beam, but not only are you contending with your own internal balance, but you have people who every once in a while just come over and you know give you a little nudge from one side or the other, and you're trying to contend with that as well, and it just makes this balancing act even more difficult. Um, just to keep progressing forward. And that's what I felt like. I was just constantly teetering on, uh, you know, falling, of losing my, my grip on what was happening. Now, despite all of that, though, <laughs> despite the oddity of the rhythmic structures and the oddity of the vocals, the song somehow keeps a consistent, aggressive edge to it. At every moment, it feels like it retains electricity and forward momentum, despite really trying its best to be a train wreck <laughs> metrically uh, and derail itself. And through this, I, ha I get a song that... Uh, it feels like blind, seething fury on an obstacle course where you're trying to get to the end but maybe you've tripped on the first obstacle and you're just so mad you've embarrassed yourself that you you get to that like hyper focused hyper determined uh, allowing anger to dictate everything you're doing that that seeing red and you just continue to trip over every single hurdle and they make you angrier and angrier but you won't stop you know barreling through this course doing it as uh, least acrobatic and and uh, visually interesting as possible. It's just every single aspect of the of the obstacle course is botched, but you still make it through. It's just in the most clumsy way possible, and that's what it feels like to me. It is when you let rage allow you to do things poorly, but you still make it to the end. <laughs> um, and I have no idea if that's what they were aiming for. I mean, maybe not. Maybe it's supposed to be confusing in aggression rather than bumbling in aggression. But bumbling is definitely what I get because that's how I felt throughout it. Uh, let's hit some lyrics real quick, I suppose. And uh, then we'll wrap this one up. I wish I had some more to add to it, but... Oh, I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Um, I don't want to forget about this. The drumming was exceptional. Where the vocals were astounding on a technical level of just how they're produced and the guitars did well at keeping up with all of their uh, varying phrasings and memorizing the... I mean, it's just, it almost feels linear at times with just how wide these uh, recurring passages are. Uh, they definitely have a lot to keep up with. The drums, I think, were the most interesting part. The guitars were just keeping forward on this... Uh, this rhythmic aggression at times, but the drums were very emotional or motive, I think is the word I want. At times they were sitting in the pocket, but a lot of the time they were embellishing what was going on around them with uh, various types of fills and uh, embellishing ideas and particularly really nice ride lines. Uh, used sparingly, but whenever they came in and the drummer decided to use the ride, it was always a really nice, light, uh, balletic sort of, uh, it's like a, like a dexterous kind of lightness. That's what it is. A lot of the song has this heavy weight to it, but there's a levity that the ride symbol brings with the rhythms that, uh, the drummer uses on them. And it's just all, all these little augmentation ideas and fills and, 
embellishing lines and then this beautiful ride that came in like twice really nice uh rhythmic ideas on there like the uh the drumstick is just just bouncing ever so effortlessly on it in nice syncopated rhythms i just the drumming to me was the big standout here it helped keep everything cohesive while the guitars were playing around with these very odd phrases the drums consistently kept this light feel to it and they consistently pushed on the two and four backbeat, if I remember right, um, constantly emphasizing our four four despite all these shifting phrases. It is the guiding light to the song. If you keep listening to the drum, you'll be fine through most of this. And uh, and they do it in, in such a, a way that feels bright and effortless in a song that is full of red aggression. <laughs> And I just, like I said, I just really appreciate that. So this track is called, uh, oh, Echo. Demi Lich Echo. Let's hit some lyrics here, see what's going on, because I certainly did not hear words. The incarnation of echoes, a creature from below, your destiny is to be it after eating of your soul. The incarnation of echoes. So this creature is going to eat your soul and then you are going to be the creature or possibly be a part of it since it has your soul in it now. It's like a, a collective of souls concept. Uh, and this creature is an incarnation of echoes. Hmm. You feel its cold limb, it's soon you, you're sooner him. Transformation, degeneration. Now you're the creature, the incarnation of all echoes. Your purpose in life is to imitate sounds and find your follower. That's it. I, I got nothing on this. I mean... Musically, I can hear some themes here. Uh, there is a, a lot of competing rhythmic sounds something that absorbs souls i would probably have a lot of voices within it and i think that could be uh, portrayed as the ever changing ebb and flow of this track the phrasings the time signatures the tempos um but by the end of the song we've also become the creature and we have a new purpose in life which is to imitate sound uh, and I don't hear any of this unification or taking over of control in the track. We continue on with the uh, chaotic, difficult to, uh, to, you know, disorienting sounds. So, yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's an interesting concept. I wonder if it's based on anything, uh, you know, what they had in mind. It's very sparse. It, a lot of it is left open to detail. Uh, sorry, left open to interpretation. I don't know. Those are my thoughts on Demi Lich's The Echo Replacement. That's where you guys come in. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you enjoyed this, anything that stood out to you, anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on. Above that, if you could, head into the description box. You'll find a link for Linktree in there with links related to everything on this on the channel. <laughs> it's that menu right there. You can find links to support the channel. You can find a link to the Discord server. You can email me. There's so much more. Go ahead and check it out if any of that interests you. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. All right, that wraps it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow wrapping up our themed week and checking out a creator request. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.